Hello, everyone. Before we begin, we would like to express our regret that we cannot be with you in person for this panel due to unforeseen circumstances. Some of us cannot attend the conference in person, but we are excited to share our thoughts and insights on the metaverse, the opportunities, the challenges, and the role of open source in shaping its future. We have prepared for this panel with great care and attention, and we're confident that we will deliver the same quality of discussion and insight as we were, we were there in person. We hope that you will find this recorded session valuable, engaging, and we hope to meet you in person soon. My name is Annie Lai. I will be the moderator of today's panel. I would like to introduce you our experts in network, edge, cloud gaming, web engine, web XR fields on their unique insights and perspectives on the metaverse and the role of the open source in the future of the metaverse. They are without particular order. Eric Meyer, developer advocate from Egalia. James Kaplan, the CEO and co-founder of Mikai. Rennie Habe, CTO of Networking Edge Access of Linux Foundation. Tina Zhou, chair of uh, LF Edge, uh, who is also a director at ARM. Welcome panelists. Hello. Hi. Great. Hello. Okay, so um, first question. So please tell us about what you and your company or organization do in the metaverse space. Who would like to start? Oh, well, we can go in slide order. So uh, my name is Eric Meyer. I'm a developer advocate at Egalia, which is an open source consultancy uh, headquartered in Spain. Um, We've uh, we've been doing uh, a number of things in the metaverse space, but uh, probably most uh, significantly, we uh, took over from Firefox Reality and uh, we relaunched it as Wolvic, which is a browser built specifically for XR devices. So uh, it's a way of bringing the entire web into an XR space. Um, and we've been, uh, advancing that, uh, releasing new versions over the past few months. And uh, that's that's where most of our interest lies right now. Awesome. Perfect. James? Right. Perfect. Um, I'm James Kaplan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a startup called Vikai. Um, we've actually been in the AI space primarily for the past few years since our founding, doing a lot of B2B AI work. But more recently, in the past two years or so, we've been moving to the metaverse space um, primarily operating on both sort of the top end of the stack and the bottom end of the stack, where the top end, we're building a lot of white label metaverse solutions for uh, pretty large name brands and at the bottom level contributing and either sponsoring or helping develop a number of sort of long-term initiatives that we have and making the metaverse more accessible. Great. Ready? Uh, hi, I'm Ronnie Hybe, CTO of Networking Edge and Access at the Linux Foundation. Uh, for those of you who still don't know, the Linux Foundation is, of course, the nonprofit organization that provides neutral platform for companies and individuals to develop open source technology, and we're active in many different technology domains. We recently, as you know, launched the Open Metaverse Foundation that is aimed at accelerating the development of the technology layers related to the metaverse. Uh, my personal focus in the foundation is uh, networking and edge computing, uh, where I help our communities define their technology vision and find ways to collaborate. The metaverse is uh, emerging as an interesting use case for many of our open source communities. Uh, it is both a great opportunity, but it's also presenting some unique challenges to the infrastructure, whether it's the networking and the edge, and we're starting to uh, address those use cases and analyze the requirements. And it's going to be very interesting time ahead as our communities adapt to these uh, new set of uh, metaverse use cases. Thank you. Tina? Hello, my name is Tina Jill, and I'm the chair of Elf Edge and a director at ARM. ARM is a global semiconductor and software design company focused on providing energy efficient computing solutions. In the metaverse space, ARM's technologies and expertise enable high performance and energy efficient processing for various applications such as VR, AR devices, edge computing, and IoT devices. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, panelists. I'm so happy that you are on this panel. Um, so next question is, um, what do you think the metaverse is and what opportunities does it present? Who would like to start? Yeah, I can go. Oh, go ahead. I, I can go first, maybe. Um, just wanted to comment that uh, we need to remember that the metaverse will come in many shapes of, and forms. Uh, we all tend to think uh, when we hear the term metaverse, we immediately think about kind of immersive AR, VR entertainment, which is part of the metaverse. But what we're seeing in our open source communities is that there are many other use cases that may mature uh, earlier, like uh, if you think of industrial use cases, things like uh, digital twins for production floors or enterprise use cases like work for, workforce education. Um, these are some of the use cases that might happen sooner uh, and that are all part of the metaverse. Um, it's uh, the, the metaverse is uh, something that could, uh, from our perspective, could harness uh, several of the technologies that's been in development in recent years, like if you think of 5G network slicing or smart orchestration of edge, these are technologies that has been, have been in the works for years. And, and um, now it seems like the metaverse will be a good use case or a good application to um, use uh, and utilize these technologies. And things that were seemed impossible a few years ago are now, um, becoming possible through the use of these technologies and um, their use for for metaverse great eric um, oh james sorry james go ahead so um very much agreed with what randy is saying on the metaverse taking multiple forms not just stuff on goggles um i think from my perspective the metaverse is primarily an evolution of a lot of current applications that are being carried out today and in perhaps inefficient formats um, where, you know, easy example of sort of filling the point of digital twins is like there were theoretically a lot of solutions around doing digital twins for a number of years now, but through better technology, those solutions go from just being like consulting projects that look interesting to actual on the ground implementations of real value. Likewise, a lot of applications, I think on the consumer side, um, get more interesting as costs come down and different types of experiences become extremely accessible in the same way that, you know, they're kind of accustomed to whether they're on apps or on the web. Um, the metaverse needs to have so much of accessibility moment, but then it's not just in the goggles, it's like more of that evolution of everything we do. Great. Yeah, I, I actually agree quite uh, quite a bit with that. Uh, the accessibility is actually one of the areas that I personally am concerned about. And I think um, that will be uh, one of the real challenges in the metaverse. I mean, to me, the metaverse is it's a new medium, but at the same time, it's an extension of the media that we have. <clears throat> and so uh, I think what it, I think what the metaverse could do is both enrich what we already have, but also have entire new ways of interacting with uh, with things. One of the <clears throat> one of the use cases I'd like to see is if you're looking at a Wikipedia page about uh, uh, regular polygons uh, through a web browser and an XR device that there will actually be a, a like a polygonal solid that you could manipulate and look at. Um, but at the same time, you know, that's interesting. But uh, also being able to uh, explore informational spaces in actual three dimensions rather than a two-dimensional projection of a 3D scene onto a monitor. Mm. Tina? Yeah. In my perspective, the metaverse is a collective uh, virtual shared space that integrates the digital and physical realities powered by advanced technologies such as AR, VR, AI, and blockchain. It presents numerous opportunities such as creating new immersive experience in entertainment, education and remote collaboration. Additionally, it fosters innovative business models, potentially transforming industries like e-commerce, gaming, 
and um, social networking. The metaverse also encourages the development of next generation computing infrastructure to support its vast interconnected ecosystem. Great, thank you for that. Um, so rather than a single software platform, John Randolph described the metaverse as a digital environment made of uh, seven distinct layers that represent different uh, faces. Um, these layers must work together from the experiences people seek to enabling technologies that made it possible. And these seven layers are infrastructure, human interfaces, decentralization, spatial and computing, creative economy, discovery and experience. Panelists, what are some of the technical challenges that you think that need to be addressed in building the metaverse? And I know Tina and Renny, you come from the infrastructure networking background. Could you give us some insight as what kind of um, technology challenges that you know uh, we'll face in building the metaverse? Uh, Tina, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. From an infrastructure perspective, the metaverse requires a robust, scalable, and efficient computing infrastructure to handle massive amounts of data and support real-time, low-latency interactions. Key challenges include energy efficiency, developing the energy efficient processes and systems to minimize the environmental impact of the massive computing resources needed for the metaverse. Scalability, ensuring that the infrastructure can grow and adapt to the increasing demand of the metaverse ecosystem. Security and privacy, protecting user data and ensuring secure communication between devices and services in the metaverse. Great. Rennie. Yeah, so um, I agree to everything Tina said, and just like to add my perspective that when you start to analyze the, the infrastructure requirements of metaverse application, you quickly realize that the demands on, on the network and, and the edge computing infrastructure is order of magnitude more than what we were used to in things like video streaming or uh, existing internet technologies. So, and it's also very clear that a lot of the processing will need to be uh, carried out in, in the edge uh, area. I mean, the devices are limited with their processing and energy capacity and the cloud is just too far away in terms of round trip delay. So the edge is becoming that sweet spot for doing all the processing, but the edge is also uh, a very resource constrained environment, which is uh, presenting new challenges. And it's also becoming clear that there needs to be much tighter integration between the applications, the metaverse applications and the infrastructure. So we got away, I would say, uh, with previous types of applications by doing everything over the top with the application, not really knowing what's available for them in terms of uh, the network and, and the computing power. Um, but that I think would not uh, fly in, in metaverse use cases. So there will need to be uh, a better integration between the apps and the network, and they will need to know what's available for them. They will need to be able to request resources from the network when they're about to do uh, a resource heavy uh, action or carry out some um, uh, heavy computational tasks. So it all calls for opening of uh, interfaces or APIs between the network layers that uh, and the applications that can be con consumed by the applications and let the applications have tighter control and better understanding of uh, what the underlying infrastructure can give them. Right. So what about the layers above um, infrastructure? I know James and Eric, you guys are very experienced in um, all those layers above network and infrastructure. Could you share your insight on the technical challenges that we might be facing in building the metaverse? Sure. Sure. Um, maybe I'll start there. Um, I think accessibility, sort of, the, I think is probably the key word of yes, that both Eric and I are going to echo, which is that one of the reasons why I think adoption has struggled to this point is because the certain solutions to accessibility so far um, are sort of towards Randy's point of being kind of lazy. If people think, oh, we're just going to pixel stream or something and everything's going to work out. Um, but actually, we need much more comprehensive technical solutions 
uh, the application layer that have the understanding that the infrastructure layer is going to move forward rapidly. So we have to be kind of planning for all of that in mind in all of our development. You know, I'm a big believer in the browser as being the primary entry point for a lot of this, but I think we need to have more intelligence in the browser in terms of how it kind of carries out uh, workloads. You know, there's a lot of technology that's been developed, but the browsers are gonna to need to push forward much faster in terms of how we look at hybrid workers, um, how we look at hybrid rendering. A lot of technology like that is I think gonna be key towards enabling application developers to make applications that load quickly and run well on cheap devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, fully agreed on that because um, yeah, not everyone can afford a PlayStation VR or even a, a what we would think of now as a lower cost headset. Um, you know, there's there are a lot of a lot of people who are resource constrained in their own way, whether it's financially or or what technology they have available to them in their local markets. And also, um, you know, if the metaverse becomes widely adopted, then there are going to be real barriers to things like how do you help users who have low vision or no vision? Um, how is the how will design uh, for immersive spaces uh, accommodate people who cannot hear? Um, you know, those those sorts of questions are are still ahead, I feel like. And uh, for that matter, I think in sort of in conjunction with the rapid advancement of the infrastructure and better understanding uh, among um, developers how to help uh, users at the application level, uh, also at the server level, uh, there are real problems right now where uh, XR browsers are not recognized by websites and so they get given the mobile version of the site which is not always appropriate and sometimes it's completely unusable in that particular form factor and so uh, it feels like there needs to be um, not just a, an advancement in the in the hardware but also an advancement in sort of the collective understanding of how do we do this in the same way that there needed to be a shift in web design 13 years ago to understand that responsive web design was the way that we develop websites now that we can. There's going to need to be, I think, a similar uh, learning curve that gets ascended by server developers, library developers, uh, and application developers, and device developers. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, I just want to uh, place a little plug that uh, Linux Foundation, Open Metaverse Foundation has um, SIGs, various SIGs, special interest groups that cover that covers all these topics. So I, I would highly recommend you to um, check them out if you are interested in exploring all these uh, technical challenges and, and wanting to um, contribute to building the metaverse. Okay, moving on to next um, question. So chat GPT. And um, we're going through this major tidal wave of the chat GPT. And uh, it's almost like we can't leave any tech conference without talking about chat GPT. And panelists, what could chat GPT mean for the metaverse? Who would like to start? Maybe I can jump in there. Sure, James. So, so actually our background in AI as a company in terms of conversational AI is actually what motivate us to move into the metaverse in the first place. So we're all very excited and bullish on the idea of more conversational interfaces to this type of content. Since I think that, you know, every time I see a demo of like some chat GPT application and some frankly boring like chat interface, I think how much cooler it would be if you had this entire like world in which it is functioning. And I mean, I think that's really where we're gonna see the metaverse take off in the next 12 months is the idea of like, finally now there's an interface pattern for these 3D worlds that isn't just like using WASD um, in kind of a silly format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd like to add that um, I'm seeing an interesting use for generative AI uh, in our domain 
Um, the, the metaverse, of course, calls for the creation of new protocols for this communication. And, and previous speakers spoke about the interoperability between headsets and and websites and, and web browsers. So we'll probably see a lot of need for creation of uh, new protocols and their implementation. And I started seeing um, impressive work on using generative AI to actually generate the, the source code um, that implements the specification. Because if you think about protocol specifications, there are very structured documents that can easily be fed and, and as training materials for uh, an AI model, and they can spit out very easily uh, code that implements the protocol. So that can be a huge accelerator for uh, putting in place all these necessary protocols that are required for the metaverse. Cool. Eric and Tina, feel free if you have any opinion. Yeah, sure. So I think ChatGPT can contribute significantly to the development and enhancement of the metaverse in several ways. Mm -hmm. Virtual uh, virtual assistants, ChatGPT can serve as an intelligent virtual assistant within the metaverse, helping users navigate the virtual world answer questions, perform tasks, mm -hmm. and provide infrastructure and information on various topics. And conversational AI, ChatGPT can be integrated into various metaverse applications to facilitate human-like interactions between users and virtual characters or NPCs, the non-player characters, enhancing the immersion and engagement. Content generation, ChatGPT can be utilized to generate dynamic and contentially relevant content for the metaverse, such as stories, dialogues, missions, or even in-word advertising. Language translation, by leveraging its language capability, ChatGPT can provide the real-time translation services for users in the metaverse enabling the seamless cross-cultural interactions and collaboration. Also, the personalized experience. ChatGPT can be used to create personalized experiences for users based on their preferences, interests, and past interactions, tailoring the metaverse environment to individual needs. Sentiment analysis, ChatGPT, can modify um, and monitor the user interactions within the metaverse to identify the sentiments, chains, and behavioral patterns, helping developers optimize the user experience and address potential issues. Education and training. ChatGPT can be employed to create immersive educational and training experience within the metaverse simulating real life situation and offering conceptual or contextual relevant guidance. The last one, uh, accessibility you mentioned already. ChatGPT can help make the metaverse more accessible for users with disabilities by providing text to speech or speech to text capabilities, as well as offering assistance and guidance tailored to their needs. By integrating ChatGPT into various aspects of the metaverse, developers can create a more engaging, interactive, and immersive virtual environment for users, while also leveraging the AI capabilities to address challenges and enhance the user experience. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so it looks like uh, we all need a chat GPT special interest group in um, Open Metaverse Foundation. <laughs> okay, so we're all here because of open source. And what do you think open source can play as a key role in developing the metaverse? Who would like to start? Yeah, I, I can naturally start coming from the Ings Foundation. Of course, for me, there is no other way uh, other than open source. But uh, more seriously, I think uh, if you think about 
what the metaverse needs to be successful. I think one of the key aspects is uh, interoperability. I mean, if we end up with uh, Google's metaverse and Meta's metaverse and maybe Siemens industrial metaverse, uh, then I don't think it will be successful. In order for it to really take off, uh, all, all the implementation needs to be uh, work nicely with each other and kind of seamlessly integrate. So open source communities have been proven in recent years to be very successful in uh, creating those necessary uh, open standards for interoperability. So I think that for the metaverse, we're already seeing uh, with the Open Metaverse Foundation and the individual communities, we're seeing uh, good collaborative work going in the industry between all players to create those necessary standards and protocols for interoperability. So that's one benefit of open source. Uh, the other aspect is a more economical one. Uh, the metaverse, like any other technology, is, is a very deep technology stack. And usually the lower layers require a lot of investment, but there is not much room there for value add and differentiation. So there's no point in uh, each and every company doing it themselves and reinventing the wheel, so to speak. It makes much more economical sense to do it in a in a sort of collaborative way as an open source project are the perfect platform for this type of collaboration on maybe uh, the lower layers of the stack so that uh, companies can invest their resources in providing differentiation in the higher layers. Right, and Tina, you are also very much involved in open source. Could you share your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Open source can play a critical role in developing the metaverse by fostering collaboration, innovation, and standardization. Open source enables developers and organizations to work together, contributing their expertise and resources to address the complex challenges in building the metaverse. This collaborative approach accelerates innovation, reduces the development costs, and ensures interoperability between different systems and services in the metaverse ecosystem. As a result, open source can help create a more accessible, inclusive, and interconnected metaverse that benefits everyone. Absolutely agree. Okay, so um, we actually have a lot of interesting questions about uh, the metaverse, but we don't have enough time. So I'd just like to give each panelist some time to share with us your parting thoughts before we conclude. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, as we were just saying, open source will play a key role <clears throat> in developing the metaverse if it's going to be at all successful. Um, that was one of the, one of the massive accelerators of the World Wide Web, right? That all of the core specifications were not just open sourced in that case, but placed in the public domain so that nobody could control it, that you wouldn't have a, a Microsoft web and a Google web and a Lycos web and an Alta Vista web or a whatever. Um, and so that I think will be. A major key. I also think that uh, taking open source approaches to development of uh, not just um, not just specifications, but sort of core components of the metaverse uh, will really be critical um, because it allows for not just a lot of eyeballs to find bugs, but a lot of eyeballs to find uh, possible failure states that aren't code related, but are uh, let's say, uh, societally related um, or are uh, based more in the human layer, you know, where someone might say, hey, I know we've been using chat GPT for these other things, but does it actually make sense in this thing that we're talking about now? Does it make sense to synthesize this kind of content as opposed to, you know, NPC dialogue or, or other fictional uh, content? So um, having a Having a community that looks at that um, and is able to see uh, from different perspectives how certain challenges might be met and how certain solutions might have unintended consequences, I think will be uh, a major key to um, 
to uh, having the metaverse advance and really become what it can be. Mm -hmm. James? Sure. I was going to say, I think given the scale and scope of all the technology that needs to be developed, um, there's going to have to be a lot of risk taking in terms of tactical decisions um, where we can't always make safe bets about like, okay, this is the right tool for this job, just because what we're trying to do, I mean, Randy's points an order of magnitude more complex than a lot of previous things. So I think, you know, there's already been a lot of initiative, I would say, shown by the open source community in terms of trying newer technologies, whether that's Rust and Wasm or other ideas around, you know, WebXR. Um, so I think it's just a matter of we have to be willing to take risks as an entire uh, development body, as opposed to just playing it safe and potentially being too slow. Sounds good. Rennie? Yeah, first I kind of uh, want to say that I really want to see the metaverse succeed. I, I'm seeing uh, exciting use cases, again, not just in the entertainment domain, but also in healthcare. We have some of our communities demonstrating things like um, remote surgery or, or uh, remote medicine that is using 3D models of organs and stuff like that, that is supported by metaverse technologies. So I really, really want to see it succeed uh, and not become just like an overinflated uh, hype thing that crashes and burns, as we've seen uh, unfortunately, with uh, other technologies not so long ago. And I think what we all need to do as, as the industry, software industry developing that is to build uh, in all the necessary guardrails. Uh, so does it, in, that it doesn't go out of control. I mean, we need to go fast, but maybe not too fast as to neglect all these guardrails and safety mechanisms because it's very important to do it responsibly and uh, make sure it succeeds. Uh, open source communities is, is, of course, as uh, previous speaker said, uh, a good platform for doing things respons uh, responsibly, uh, with responsibility and having a lot of eyeballs and making sure everything is done properly. So I encourage everyone to take part in these communities. Uh, but really, the, the end goal is developing um, a successful metaverse with all the uh, guardrails in place so it can really take off. Mm -hmm. Tina? Yeah, as we continue to explore and develop the metaverse, it is crucial to prioritize sustainability, inclusivity, and collaboration. By leveraging open source technologies and fostering partnership among various stakeholders, we can create a metaverse that is not only technologically advanced, but also socially responsible and environmentally sustainable. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, panelists, for your val invaluable insights. And we're very lucky to have you join our panel. And for the next couple of minutes, I'd just like to briefly um, introduce Open Metaverse Foundation here. Um, I'd like to share my screen here. Okay, Open Metaverse uh, Foundation, um, it was launched um, la last year, and its mission is to create open software and standards to enable, enable portability, interoperability for an open, global, scalable world, which supports interactive and immersive experiences for the benefits of the individuals in the industry. And the foundation is not to build the metaverse, rather we're building the blocks, uh, the blocks, the enabling technologies to build this interoperable metaverse. And the focus, there are focus areas, as uh, er uh, earlier I mentioned, we have a lot of um, special interest groups that work on various aspects of the metaverse. And um, basically what the, the groups do is to create scenarios and then develop source codes to demonstrate um, the scenarios. And throughout the process, we build specifications and publish standards. And this is where you can come join us. So as we conclude this panel, we just want to emphasize that metaverse is not the work of a single company or group of individuals. It requires collaboration, inclusivity, and diversity of the expertise from across various industrial and communities. 
The challenges and the opportunities presented by the metaverse are too great for any one entity to tackle alone. Therefore, we'd like to invite all of you to join us at the Open Metaverse Foundations to build this metaverse that benefits all of humankind. We need uh, the collective knowledge and expertise of this wider community to create a metaverse that is truly inclusive, accessible, equitable for everyone. We hope this panel has inspired you to join us in this effort, and we look forward to working together towards this exciting and transformative vision of the future. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.